Tonight, the Queen acknowledges it was a bumpy year. We get a glimpse of her annual Christmas Day message and a sense that she knows it was a difficult time from the personal to the political. A Quebec man is spending his fifth Christmas behind bars in a Dubai jail for a crime he says he did not commit. His family is speaking out. These letters helped a lot. It changed the energy around the school. Messages of kindness to help members of the Makwasagagan First Nation. The best is yet to come. And some are calling 2019 the year of Céline. Our conversation with the Canadian star on life after René and becoming an internet icon. This is The National. Good evening, I'm Neil Kirksal filling in tonight. We start with a look ahead to a holiday tradition for some two and a half billion Commonwealth citizens around the world, the Queen's Royal Christmas Message. Buckingham Palace will air the full address tomorrow, but in excerpts released today, Her Majesty appears well aware 2019 is a year many in her country and in the royal family would rather forget. Our Carolyn Dunn takes a closer look. The Duke of Edinburgh was released this morning after a four-night hospital stay, just in time to join the Queen and family at Sandringham Estate for Christmas. A spot of good news in a year with so little. There's no doubt that this year has been one of the roughest rides she's had for quite a long time. In her annual Christmas message, the Queen will acknowledge just that. The path, of course, is not always smooth and may at times this year have felt quite bumpy, she will say. A year in which bad headlines and painful events have cast a long shadow on much of 2019. It started last January with a frightening car accident with Prince Philip at the wheel. We go inside Buckingham Palace. And of course Prince Andrew's ouster from public life for enduring links to convicted sex offender Jeffrey Epstein and allegations against him. I have no recollection of ever meeting this lady. New parents, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, struggled to deal with the royal spotlight. They'll spend Christmas in Canada, away from the tabloid press. Perhaps that distance will help heal the rift between her two grandsons that developed this year. She would have been probably deeply saddened by the, the rift between William and Harry. Um, for her, you know, family is very important. Personal turmoil that seems to match the political chaos and divisions over Brexit that continue to fester. This former palace press secretary says this too shall pass for the monarchy. In over a thousand years it's had all sorts of circumstances running against it, but it has survived. Queen Elizabeth will call for unity in her message, noting small steps taken in faith and in hope can overcome deep-seated divisions. Perhaps a message from the monarch to her country and her family. Carolyn Dunn, CBC News, London. As Carolyn mentioned, Harry and Meghan are in Canada for the holidays. They haven't shared the location, but they have shared their Christmas card, which happens to be their son's first. Seven-month-old Archie seems pretty fascinated with the camera. Archie's beaming parents released the greeting, not through their own social media account, but through the Queen's Commonwealth Trust Twitter account. Now, in keeping with tradition, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau also released his official Christmas greeting today. It's the season for giving and for giving back, from supporting folks in need in our communities to reaching out to neighbours who might be alone for the holidays. And we're especially thinking of our service members here in Canada and overseas who give so much to our country. Thank you for everything you do. The Prime Minister and his family are now on vacation in Costa Rica. Parliament will be back in session the last week of January. Donald Trump is spending the holidays at his Mar-a-Lago resort in Florida. And an issue top of mind for the U.S. President is North Korea's ominous promise of a, quote, Christmas surprise for the United States. Jacqueline Hansen takes a look now at the cryptic threat the White House is scrambling to decipher. Merry Christmas. Fantastic job. In a Christmas Eve video call with U.S. troops, President Trump commended the military Tremendous warriors. and seemed unfazed by a potential Christmas surprise from North Korea. We'll see what happens. Well, let's see. Maybe it's a nice present. Maybe it's a present where he sends me a beautiful vase as opposed to a missile test.
Earlier this month, North Korea said it's up to the U.S. what Christmas gift it will get. It'll depend on whether Washington complies with Pyongyang's deadline to ease up on sanctions by the end of the year. They have referred to missiles specifically as gifts in the past. So my guess is that they're going to launch some kind of large missile. Pressure has been building since last February, when negotiations between President Trump and Kim Jong-un over ending North Korea's nuclear program fell apart. In May, North Korea launched short-range missiles into the sea, and twice this month it carried out what appears to be rocket engine tests. He definitely likes sending rockets up, doesn't he? That's why I call him Rocket Man. Trump has been largely focused on China and his impeachment. I think President Trump uh, himself has been quite disinterested after sensing that the kind of deal that he wanted with North Korea is no longer likely. But Kim isn't backing down. Over the weekend, he met with military officials to talk about boosting the country's armed forces. That's okay. We'll find out what the surprise is and we'll deal with it very successfully. And let's see what happens. The Trump administration is monitoring satellite imagery closely to make sure it's prepared for whatever North Korea's plan is. Jacqueline Hansen, CBC News, Washington. Now, even during his break, perhaps not surprisingly, the U.S. president also took some time to lash out at the Democrats over his stalled impeachment trial in the Senate. They treated us worse than anybody's been treated from a legal standpoint in the history of the United States. It's never happened before, where you can't have a lawyer, you can't have a witness, you can't have time. The issue is at an impasse with the Republican and Democratic leaders at odds over whether the f witnesses should be called and the format as well. The trial could begin in about two weeks' time. A Quebec man will remain behind bars this holiday season in the United Arab Emirates after the appeal of his fraud conviction was rejected. Sarah Lovett has an update now on today's hearing and his family's plea for help. André Gauthier hasn't been home for Christmas since 2015. This year won't be any different. The Quebec geologist is serving an eight-year prison sentence in Dubai for something his family says he didn't do. Alexis says his father isn't getting a fair trial. He says Gauthier was a whistleblower who alerted authorities about alleged irregular dealings in a UAE gold trading company. Instead of being thanked for speaking out, his family says he was arrested and charged with committing the very fraud he uncovered. Today, a panel of appeals court judges in Dubai found Gauthier not guilty in 11 of 73 charges. But because the judges say the appeal of the other charges wasn't filed in time, Gauthier will stay in prison. We were very disappointed with the news today. We we're actually expecting that Andre would have gone free and been able to leave uh, Dubai after several years there. Gauthier's family turned to this activist for help with the case. And this is where the Canadian government needs to step up. Ottawa says they are. We've been uh, uh, closely following his case over the past uh, uh, months and years. And in May, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau said he's aware of Gauthier's situation. Today, Global Affairs Canada released a statement highlighting that Foreign Affairs Minister François-Philippe Champagne is in touch with the Gauthier family and has raised the case directly with his counterpart. We will continue to raise the case directly at all levels of the Emirati government. Requests for comment from the UAE Ministry of Justice went unanswered. We're going to fight to fix this issue, Alexis Gauthier says, because his father doesn't deserve another Christmas away from home. Sarah Levitt, CBC News, Montreal. The number of Canadians who've gone to police claiming to be victims of so-called revenge porn is rising. Now, Canada made it illegal to post intimate images of individuals online without their consent five years ago. But as Bonnie Allen reports, some experts say young people appear undeterred. On this university campus, young women say they're fed up with all the victim shaming and blaming that comes when intimate images are shared without consent. When you send that to someone in confidence and they're going to use it against you and threaten to show other people who you don't want seeing it, it's not fair. 
unfair and infuriating, says 27-year-old Serena Thompson. Because it mostly just happens to women, and if it's not happening to men, then people don't take it seriously. But it is getting more attention. It started with the high-profile suicides of Amanda Todd and Retea Parsons. The girls from BC and Nova Scotia were cyberbullied and harassed, their intimate images shared by peers and strangers over and over. The federal government made that a crime five years ago. In 2015, police forces in Canada handled 340 cases. By 2017 and 2018, that number jumped to about 1,500 cases annually, with the total number now surpassing 5,000. I think it's going to increase over the next few years, increase with the knowledge that the law is there, increase with the ability of technology to obtain these photos. It's sometimes called revenge porn since the perpetrator is often a scorned lover seeking revenge. But 20% of cases involve perpetrators under 18. Digital literacy expert Matthew Johnson says their motive is different. The boys in particular do it to earn social capital, uh, to earn the approval of their friends. He says boys are five times more likely to share a girl's intimate image without consent if they hold traditional gender stereotypes and believe the girl deserved it. Do you have consent? Because that's the, the only question that ever needed to be asked. Did you have consent? No, why did she and why didn't she and all of that? Research also shows young people are not deterred by the new law and that shifting the focus from victim blaming to teaching respect and consent would be more effective in stopping this crime. Bonnie Allen, CBC News, Regina. A major snowstorm walloped Newfoundland on this Christmas Eve. Had a snow day, so enjoying the weather. Parts of the province are getting up to 30 centimeters of snow. Many flights were canceled or delayed at St. John's Airport. As well, courts and government offices were shut down for the day. Plows are out now cleaning up the roads. Another storm is expected, though, on Boxing Day. Of course, rough winter weather is par for the course in Winnipeg or Winterpeg for those who felt its wrath. But this year, there's an abnormal freeze on the Red River. Cameron McIntosh has that story for you tonight. This is odd. All along Manitoba's frozen Red River, normally flat, smooth ice has frozen in sharp, jagged bumps. Frazzle ice, rare here. You can see that this ice is collapsed. So. And says geologist and ice formation expert Nora Kassen, unpredictable and unstable. Because of these really unusual conditions in the fall, uh, we don't have that really uh, consistent ice and uh, it can be difficult to tell how safe it is. This fall, southern Manitoba had record rain and record high river levels. At freeze up, floating ice all jammed together, forming that rough surface. This is the original level where the ice froze. In the month or so since, the water level has dropped about two and a half meters. That's more than eight feet. The ice has collapsed down with it and will continue as the river drains and narrows over the winter. Once a lifeline for moving people and goods, these days the frozen river is mostly used for recreation. For the first time in 20 years, the skating trail at Winnipeg's Forks Market, billed as Canada's longest, might not happen. We're talking about plan B, C, D, E every single day, but plan A is the river and like I said, we have not ruled that out just yet. Um, as long as it's safe, it's something that we'll pursue. That call will have to be made soon. Even if the ice settles, the rough, jagged surface is hard to do much with. While unusual, Kasson expects it might be a sign of things to come. Climate change projections suggest that we're going to see more big, intense storms like we saw in the fall, setting up these kind of crazy conditions. Under the surface, that frigid river is still moving. The ice bending, cracking and dropping along with it. Cameron McIntosh, CBC News, Winnipeg. Coming up for you, an interview with a Canadian legend. Céline Dion is having a moment, a major moment, a new tour, a new album, and a new generation of fans. But next, the Christmas treat you didn't know you wanted, how a mashup led to this lineup. We're back in two minutes. Well, if you've spent any time on the East Coast, you've probably heard of them, tasted them. Maybe you've even fallen in love with them. Chicken bones, not poultry. We're talking about candy here. But as Kayla Hounsel shows us this year, there's a new liquid twist 
on that old favorite, and it's already very popular. Overnight success kind of caught us by surprise. I do apologize for the inconvenience. It's pretty chaotic at Moonshine Creek Distillery. They're making that good taste of Ganong's chicken bones into a, a savory drink. The Clark brothers had no idea their chicken bones liqueur made from the Ganong brothers' hard cinnamon candy would be such a hit. 2,500 bottles sold out overnight. So why is this Christmas candy creating such a craze? Let's backtrack way back to 1885 in St. Stephen, New Brunswick. They were invented by a Ganong candy maker by the name of Frank Sparhawk. Brianna Ganong is a fifth generation CEO. It's kind of like the holidays aren't the holidays unless I have my chicken bones and we do hear that a lot. Now candy makers are making extra chicken bones just so Moonshine Creek can make more liqueur. It's a very uh, handcrafted process. Exactly as they did in 1885, they knead the mixture, add the color, and run it through the chicken bone stretcher. Then comes the chocolate center. And they roll it up like a big jelly roll. A giant chicken bone, hand pulled through a machine until it spits out the tiny treats. There are so many stories from people with an emotional connection to the candy. Maybe they met their first love around, you know, a social setting where chicken bones were there, or maybe how uh, they have to send gift packages to a loved one overseas and they always want chicken bones. When the new batch finally went on sale, the lineup at the liquor store went on and on just after 7 a.m. on a Tuesday. I got mine. Oh, look at that. 6,000 bottles sold out in a matter of minutes. You're welcome, yeah. Merry, Merry, Christmas. Merry Christmas to you too. If you're wondering how it tastes, tastes like chicken bones, but mm. only with a little kick. The remaining burning question, why the heck are they called chicken bones? We can only speculate. Some would say because it is kind of a long um, kind of candy that has a marrow type chocolate center that maybe that was why. So it continues to be a bit of a Christmas mystery. But this year, one that's creating extra holiday spirit. Kayla Hounsel, CBC News, Waterville, New Brunswick. Also in New Brunswick tonight, but on a very different note, the battle to put out the Minto Tire Fire will continue right through Christmas. As long as there's a fire, there will be firefighters on the scene and there will be people trucking in sand and uh, environment and local government officials will be there. Air and water quality advisories are still in effect for neighboring areas. Sand is being dumped on the flames. Officials are saying right now they won't have a full picture of the fire's environmental impact until it's completely extinguished. Edmonton police are investigating a suspicious fire that forced 41 people out of a hotel. It broke out on the second floor of the Jasper Place Hotel. One person was rescued. Another escaped by jumping to the ground. They were not hurt. In Calgary, that smoke is from a hotel room up in flames. No one was hurt there, but there is an ongoing investigation. Governor General Julie Payette visited Canadian soldiers in the lead up to Christmas. The troops are deployed in Latvia and Romania as part of Operation Reassurance. The Governor General thanked them for serving far from home, especially during the holidays. This was her third visit to the region as part of her role as Commander-in-Chief of Canada. We've got much more to come for you on tonight's National, including this story. How one First Nation grappling with a suicide crisis is being flooded with hope one letter at a time. Welcome back. Words of hope and love are pouring into a small First Nation in northern Saskatchewan. The chief of Makwasagagan declared a state of emergency last month after a 10-year-old girl took her own life and several other young people tried to. Now people from across this country and around the world are trying to help. Here again is Bonnie Allen. Like every these grade three students in Regina are making snowflakes and cards to send to children in the northern First Nation of Makwasagagan. They are feeling very sad and uh, are in the blue zone. They're only eight, so their teacher didn't explain the suicide crisis to them. This is a lesson in compassion and kindness. Just remember that you are special and unique. 600 kilometers to the north, messages have been pouring in from across Canada and from around the world. I was just like, whoa. 
thousands of cards, wallpaper the Makwisagagan school. I know nothing about how you are feeling right now. All I do know is that you are not alone. Be strong. Something wonderful is coming. These grade 12 students are overwhelmed by the support. Well, in the beginning, everything was like <laughs> so sad. There was barely students coming to school, teachers were quitting. These letters helped a lot. It changed the energy around the school. Of course, inspiring messages aren't enough. Crisis counselors are on standby. Several young people have taken their own lives or tried to in recent months. Band leaders are grappling with a lot of issues in the community, including parental neglect, alcohol and drug addiction, violence and lingering trauma from residential schools. It's been very hard. Dorothy Angus is a teacher, but she has found it too painful to go back to school since her 10-year-old daughter Jalen killed herself in early November. Still, she's grateful for all the cards. If we were to read them all, I'm sure we'd, we'd find all that love from everybody across the world. And she plans to return to the classroom in the new year. I'm not going to sit back and hide myself in my bedroom. Her own message of resilience and hope to join the rest. Bonnie Allen, CBC News, Regina. We have another installment of our reporter's notebook just ahead for you. Washington correspondents Paul Hunter and Lindsay Duncombe are up next, reflecting on what it's been like to cover the year's biggest story in U.S. politics, the impeachment of President Trump. And later tonight's moment is the one that really counts. NORAD has its eye on this guy. Welcome back. Let's take you through some of the international developments we've been tracking. Starting in New Zealand, where the search for bodies after that volcanic eruption is over. Police are stopping the search for the last two missing people, an Australian teenager and a tour guide from New Zealand. Police believe they were swept into the ocean. The Fukari or White Island eruption killed 17 people, including one person who died in hospital this past weekend. Well, staying in that part of the world, a Christmas stunt at a Sydney mall put five people in hospital. Um, once the balloons dropped, like it was complete chaos. A small stampede to be precise. The idea was to fill balloons with gift cards and then release them as part of a mall promotion. But witnesses say children were in that crush and some people suffered neck, back, even traumatic chest injuries. In India, a new government measure is stoking more distrust as protests grow over a controversial citizenship law. <laughs> The government wants to update the National Population Register, a database to identify people living in the country. Critics say it's just another way for the ruling Hindu Nationalist Party to discriminate against minorities. For weeks, there have been protests against a new law granting undocumented migrants a path to Indian citizenship, but it excludes Muslims. Well, Pope Francis led midnight mass at the Vatican as part of traditional Christmas Eve celebrations. Thousands of worshippers packed St. Peter's Basilica tonight, and in his sermon, Francis urged them not to let the Catholic Church's failings lead them away from accepting God's love. The Pope did not specifically mention the handling of sex abuse cases by the Church, but this is just his latest attempt to confront the ongoing scandal that has rocked the Church for nearly two decades. Just last week, he abolished the rule that helped keep sex abuse cases secret. Well, when 2019 started, Donald Trump was already divisive. He was certainly controversial. But as this year ended, he's also a president impeached in his first term. That's certainly, though, not where the story ends. There's still a Senate trial and a presidential election to come. 2020 will be busy. With all of the politics and personalities, all the importance of the U.S. Capitol, a reporter in Washington will always be busy. But that reality hit a whole new level this year. Paul Hunter and Lindsay Duncombe reflect on that in tonight's Reporter's Notebook. Now, I've been in Washington for a while now uh, through the Obama administration and now Trump. Um, it is always busy. 
uh, on a news basis in Washington, D.C., there is always something going on, but it's crazy. I mean, it is every day it is something else. Every multiple hours the story changes in the course of a day, and then came the impeachment process, and everything just went on steroids. The president must be held accountable. No one is above the law. It was a remarkable, truly historic moment set to split an already fiercely divided country and threaten the presidency of Donald Trump. Today, I'm announcing the House of Representatives moving forward with an official impeachment inquiry. When the impeachment inquiry was announced, you really did get a sense that this was a different moment, a, a different moment because of really the gravity of, of what it could mean. I mean, this is only the third time a president has gone through this process and the stakes are incredibly high. And everyone sort of knew that it was going to be an intense and, and historical moment that we were all going to be a part of. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you are about to give is the truth? High drama amid some of the highest stakes in U.S. politics, the Trump presidency itself. After well, you walk into the impeachment hearing room and you feel the history, right? If this is not impeachable conduct, what is? Like you can't help but think about Clinton and Nixon. I mean, when I was a kid, I watched the Nixon impeachment hearings uh, after school watched the Clinton hearings years later. Uh, and now to, to be sitting in the room where it's happening, you feel the gravitas of it all. And you start thinking about the witnesses and what they're doing. I have no interest in advancing the outcome of your inquiry in any particular direction except toward the truth. And what they're doing is testifying against the most powerful man on the planet, the president. Holy cow, right? You swear or affirm... They were the final witnesses in a momentous week on Capitol Hill. David Holmes, counselor at the U.S. Embassy in Ukraine, and Fiona Hill, former Russia advisor with the U.S. National Security Council. The stakes for them, these are career diplomats, you know, people who spent their lives in the military, in the government, who have decided to come there that day and to do this. Good morning. Donald Trump is turning to a new battle this morning to remain in the White House after being impeached. Our senior Washington editor is Lindsay Duncoma with us this morning to make sense of what happened last night. Well, it really was such a split screen moment, Heather, last night. You had on the one side... You do get an energy from the story because so much is happening and there's an energy when you're in the middle of these things as they happened and everyone is just wanting to know what it means. Whatever happens in the coming days and weeks. It is such a privilege to be telling this story from here right now. It's a privilege that uses up all of your energy and all of your intellect and um, but it is something that is just incredibly important and meaningful to do. Everything this country does affects Canada. In the end, it was a simple vote count, tallied electronically live on TV. The result, historic. Donald Trump impeached. But what a day leading up to that. Resolved that Donald John Trump, President of the United States, is impeached for high crimes and misdemeanors. Your job is to provide the context to explain it in a way that matters to Canadians, because that's our audience, right? That's who every single one of our stories goes to, and it's the foundation of every story we do. And I just hope that the stories come across in such a way as to bring value to people back home. Just ahead for you, a little bit of fun with a world tour and a new album and a new level of fame, a conversation with Céline Dion. I'm, I never wanted to have a hit, I wanted to have a career. Our interview with the Canadian legend is up next. I finally made it back home to Canada.
And back here to the city of the world champion Toronto Raptors. She knows how to charm a crowd. Céline Dion at her Toronto show earlier this month. It's part of a 10-month tour across North America and Europe. All this just months after she wrapped an eight-year residency in Las Vegas. So Dion has a lot going on right now, but before she set out on that grueling tour schedule, she carved out some time to sit down with Tom Power, the host of CBC Radio's Q earlier this year. And one thing is for sure, not jealous at all, they had a lot of fun. She's been on stage in front of crowds and cameras since she was 12 years old. What do you say? Seemingly born to capture an audience with hair-raising performances and that voice. There's no With an epic list of gigantic power ballads, Céline Dion went on to become one of the highest selling artists of all time. To escape, the city was sticky and, cool. and in 2003, when playing shows in Las Vegas wasn't exactly the coolest thing you could do, with a record breaking residency, A New Day, she single handedly made Vegas cool again. I'm More than a thousand shows later, and three years after the death of her longtime manager and husband, Rene Angelil, Céline has left Vegas and started a new chapter. I mean, there's no denying Céline Dion is having a moment right now. It's even got a name. The Selenaissance, the longtime pop diva, now a fashion icon, is connecting with a generation of fans who weren't even born when Titanic came out. I mean, she practically shuts down every social media site as soon as she puts up a photo. Fans are taking all of Celine's Instagram photos and turning them into memes. Courage, don't you dare fail me now. And now, courage. That's the title of her upcoming album, and world tour, but it's also a word that's come to define her outlook on life. I recently caught up with Céline Dion in Montreal to get into all of it. Here we go, Roy. How's it going? I'm doing very well, how about you? Good, welcome to the show. Thanks a lot for doing this. Well, thank you for flying to oh, Montreal. come on, I mean, I'd, I'd crawl. Oh, come on, come on, don't get me started. Uh, okay. I, wanna just, I wanna start by going back a little bit, and I wanna go back to June 8th. 2019, your final residence show in, in Vegas, and you walk out on stage and you open the show with Power of Love as you kind of did every single night. But on the last night that you did it, when you walked out and you knew it was gonna be your last night doing this show, what did you feel in that moment? I felt very strong when I did the last show, even though there was a lot of butterflies going on. I did not want to um, cry, which, um, it's easy for me to cry because I'm very emotional, passionate, mm. and I care and I love what I do. Mm. And I get, when I get embraced by the audience, I, I get taken by the emotions. Mm. And I didn't want to just cry. I just wanted to say, hey, last show, yeah. I'm so happy. So many people came and we're still here tonight and I'm about to hit the road. I, I love that you said that when I, when I um, you said it's hard for me not to cry because I take in so much of what the, because I thought it would be because of the content of the songs, but also because you see what the audience is reacting to these songs, because these songs mean an awful lot to an awful lot of people, you know? They listen to them yes. at births and, and deaths and, and, and birthdays and all these sort of moments. Like, do you, do you take some time at a concert to kind of like look around and see how these songs that you sang? That's all they... I do actually, without, I don't want to interrupt no, please, you. please, please. It's just that, um, you know, years, year after year, pretty much like for 20 something years, uh, some less, some a little more, but um, I've been singing some of those songs, a lot of those songs, if I can uh, rephrase that, uh, night after night. And many times in interviews, they've asked me, aren't you tired of singing the same songs all over My heart again? Will go on or something and like sometimes that, yeah. Yeah. I have to admit to you and say, oh, it's hard. Yeah. It's hard because you have to make this song tonight like you've sing, sing it for the first time. Why? Because those people that are in the audience tonight, it might be their favorite. 
So when I start the song that I think, that I might think that I don't want to sing it, they change it automatically. And it's like the first time, every time. Believe it or not, they make it happen. Can we talk about this new record? I just got to hear a little bit of it. And I, I did want to talk a little bit. I know we can't talk that much about it. But, you know, Celine, the, the word courage stuck out to me. You know, it's, it's the name of the tour. It's the name of the record. It's the name of the song that I just heard. I want to know what that word means to you. Well, it means that um, everybody is going through um, things in life, um, things that we have to, uh, I would say, when something bad happens to you in life, you have to find a way to overcome these obstacles and find a way to find inner strength to say that's part of life. This is not something that you choose. This is something that is imposed to you by life. And it's up to you to go through uh, these obstacles. And you have the options if you're going to need help or not, mm. or how you're going to go through this. Yeah. Uh, and we all do have good, time, good moments and, and bad mom moments. And we all lose people. And saying that, uh, losing um, the father of my children, um, um, my husband, my manager, um, the person that I love the most um, in the world, and um, the person that I can rely upon and without questioning anything since I'm 12 years old. And I really believe that through all the years with Renee, who gave me so much, who taught me so much, Mm -hmm. And I feel him through the eyes of my kids. And inside of me, I felt very, very, very strong, probably mm -hmm. stronger than ever before, mm -hmm. because I make decisions and I'm not scared. Before I was not part of meetings. It was, yeah. Renee was really, I don't want to say overprotecting me, but he was protecting me a lot because he wanted me to just you sing the best you can. Yeah, I want you to enjoy. Else, yeah. And I will, you don't need to do this. So did you have to learn how to do that? Did you have to learn how to become a different I'm person? I'm still learning. Yeah, what did you it's have to learn? learn? It's a learning process. Like, like what? what did you, I'm, I'm just curious. It's like, it's like learning that um, the best is yet to come. And that, you know what? I don't want that to sound pretentious, but I am courageous. You are. And I hope you know that that courage you give and I hate to put this burden on you, but how your courageousness or your courage can help so many people. I mean, I, I know that's not lost on you. Well, I appreciate it. And if only that is what I need to do to go on stage and sing that song to help people, yeah. I will do this for the rest of my life. And you, you can do it for the rest of your life because it seems like every single year there's a younger generation that falls deeply in love with your music all over again. And I don't understand that one. Are you familiar with the, the Selenaissance, they call it? The what? Selenaissance. 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 Which is, you know, where Drake, I like it. Drake wants to get your photo tattooed on his arm. Oh. No, he wants to. tell me it's a fake one. It's a fake one, but he wants to. Oh, gosh, but he, but, thank you. But, it, but there's, <laughs> some, there's something going on here, man. It's a thing. You're, you're, you're a meme. You're an internet icon right now. You're a. Well, I don't know. I don't know. Don't make me blush. I don't know. But I mean, I, it, I'm happy I, about I it. I see. I see. I see it. And, and it's. Um, I don't know if it's because. I've done everything that needed to be done to have an international career, because this is what I wanted. I don't need to prove to my family, my friends, the industry, myself anymore. Yeah. I, I did that. Yeah. Okay, I, they gave me a, a spot. Mm -hmm. I took it. And I'm, I never wanted to have a hit. I wanted to have a career. I went to school, learned English, tried things, and... Right now, it's like, am I scared to, to fail? I don't even consider failure or failing. Is that some things will not work as much as other things. Some people will comment on more clothing. This is my favorite. I didn't like that. Mm. I prefer this hair. I don't like that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She said, um, you, but like I said before, you can't please everybody. No, you're right. All I know is that I go to... You have to assume yourself. I go to a karaoke night, and oh! people who are 22 get up and do That's the Way It Is. I, 
Oh, that's, that's nice. My, that's my favorite. I, I, wanted, so I would favorite love song. to go there because I love to sing so much. Yeah, so next time you're in Toronto, give me a call. You know, we'll figure it out. I figured it out. <laughs> I have so many songs that every word you're going to say, I have a song. Uh, devil. I'm just trying to think of words that you could sing. Okay, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> I was just thinking this, but I don't know why that says it. Where do you live, Toronto? Bye. I don't know. That, that <laughs> I'm was, joking. That's the last word. That's the first word that came to my mind when you Tell said Sandy. Tell me you took a word. picture of that. I want a copy of it. I think that should be the new album cover. <laughs> of my so new album cover <laughs> is, is, is <laughs> giving, me, giving, me, giving me the finger. Can I do a banjo version of That's the Way It Is? Oh. I can read hey, your mind. And you should have brought story. it. We could have done it together. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet Thanks you. Thanks for doing this. Thank you so much. It's nice to meet yeah, you. Thank you so much. Do that version. I would love to hear that. I'm gonna, I'll work it up when I get home. Okay. And you want it to do the easy way. B flat, C major. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah, I can make that happen. Any key works. Whatever. Make it your own. The best. Dion's latest album, Courage, debuted at number one when it was released in November. It hasn't been able to maintain that momentum, though. It's fallen since then off the Hot 100 chart. Even though pe people may not be buying her albums the way they used to, her concerts are a hot ticket. She reportedly made more than $30 million just on the first leg of her North American tour. There's a lot of excitement flying around tonight, mainly because of what's in the air. Once he enters our airspace, we have our Canadian and American jet fighters escort him through the West. And NORAD's not so classified mission is our moment. While most people are at home on Christmas Eve, it is the busiest night of the year for a select few. The big man in red, for example, and the diligent technicians at NORAD, the North American Aerospace Defense Command. They've been tracking Santa's Christmas journeys since the early days of the Cold War. The Santa Tracker is the tried and true satellite technology that lets children know the perfect time to put out the milk and cookies. And in tonight's moment, we've got an inside look at how it works. And we'll be sure skies are clear for each stage of Santa's Yuletide journey. We're responsible for protecting and tracking anything that comes into North American airspace. Rudolph's nose is so bright and it's full of infrared heat because it lights Santa's way. That's how we're able to track Santa. We use our satellites and our radars to pinpoint where he is at a given point in time. And then once he enters our airspace, we have our Canadian and American jet fighters escort him through the West. He'll typically start at the International Dateline in the Pacific, but fun fact, when he comes into North American airspace and our jet fighters intercept him, he slows down because Santa loves to wave to our pilots and hang out with them while they're in the sky. Just like we here at NORAD have lots of people who work in different offices and track things throughout the year um, to defend our homeland, Santa has the same thing, right? He has help from his elves to make sure that that list is good to go. Santa, we're ready for the big night. You are clear for takeoff. Oh, oh, oh. Got the all clear. Remember to leave out some healthy options as well. Maybe some carrots for the reindeer. They need sustenance also. That is the national for you on this Tuesday, December 24th. I'm Neve Cooksaw.